Now we need to do a couple of Zener diodes. Uh, there are actually two different diodes. Um, this particular kit has the the 1N5239 diode first. That is actually marked as D1. The instructions actually go to D2 and then D1. So you'll notice D1 is from here to here. Now, the problem that we have this time is we've talked about resistors not having polarity. That does not work for diodes. Diodes are, are it's like a one-way street on these puppies. Uh, I'm going to see if you can see the, ba the color band there. All right. Note the black band on this diode. That black band must match these double lines on the diagram. So notice that this is backwards. We need to flip this sucker over. So here's the way it's going in. Put these in backwards, they don't work. So these are polarity sensitive. Match the black band with the double side of the uh, silk screen. I haven't used that word yet, actually, silk screen. Uh, the silk screen is the white stuff. You see the, the little text printed on the, on the PCB. Um, we, quote, we refer to it as a silk screen without thinking about it a whole lot, but I figured it was worth going ahead and mentioning there. Form the resistor leads just like we've been doing all along. I'm going to bring it so that the black band is facing that double-sided version of the silk screen. I'm going to push this in. And then I'm going to take it back. We'll come back and refocus so you can see exactly what that should look like. Now I'm going to put my finger on it, flip it over. I'm going to bend these leads back now. If I were you, I'd probably go ahead and solder that in and be done with it. Um, I've got, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the other one in here real fast so I can solder both of them at the same time. Now this is the 1N5229 diode. Same deal as before. See the black bar? We'll be able to get this. Now, interesting things, we've had people take these out of the packages before and tell me they can't read the uh, they don't know which diode is which i don't know if you know these things are, are tiny i mean they're they're an eighth of an inch long and a sixteenth of an inch wide but believe it or not they actually have that full part number stamped on that little glass body uh, so if you do find yourself mixing them up and get a couple of magnifying glasses together you can actually read the numbers we're going to slide this into d2 Again, this is the 1N5229 diode, and there you go. So all we're going to do now is flip this sucker over, solder these in. Now there's one thing I want you to notice. I've been working with the designers on these for a while. You notice the very tiny, tiny, and in fact I'll put my soldering iron back up. I want you to see this. Notice the the little bitty tiny thin rings right there for those versus the much larger oval shaped pads on these uh, I asked the guys to start doing this more and more to make the the board a little bit more durable if you make a mistake a lot of guys go and start pulling things apart and then have to reheat them and then turn around and try to solder them again. And next thing you know, they've actually lifted one of those pads right off the, the PCB, which doesn't help us a whole lot. So, uh, got a little bit of solder here. We're going to let this set for a couple of seconds. And we'll pour a couple of some solder into that. These oblong pads really do a nice job. Get right up on the pad, right up on the lead, and you can truly feed the solder into the joint. In fact, you have to add a little extra heat sometimes because there's so much mass there. Let's see if I can get this back into where we want it. There you go.
but that was the, the comment we had as far as making these pads a little more durable was because of the DIY nature of what we do not everybody's been soldering for years and not everybody has special tools like and such now I have one here that on the pad it the pad was big enough that I didn't get the pad hot, quite hot enough I'm gonna reheat it see if you can see what I'm trying to do here I'm just gonna take this and put my iron on it uh, it's another wagon wheel it's a wagon wheel on a oblong pad there's our problem it takes some heat to get these to work See if I got that one. Yeah, it eventually grabbed in there. The wagon wheel, I'll tell you what, they serve a purpose, but they, that is probably one of the more difficult things to do here is to get those to actually heat up. In fact, if you find yourself tro having really trouble with one of those, you might consider taking the part out and actually preheating the board, trying to heat that ground plane. In fact, I've mentioned that word ground plane a couple of times. Probably never explained what it is. Um, if you look, in fact, here's a good spot right here. You'll see the silver edge under all of this red solder mask. You see this big thing. This is solid copper underneath. This is what we call a ground plane. Now this one up here is actually the power traces going to the triac, so it's not quite the same thing. But this is a this is the this is the low voltage ground plane where all the ICs and all the resistors all find that common uh, connection at, and it is one solid chunk of copper. So it takes a bit to get warmed up to actually accept uh, the parts we want to put on it. And there's D1 and D2 soldered in, ready to go.